Today on Zoom, the Daredevil ball jump. We're going to use it to see which ball bounces the highest. I've always wanted to do karate. It's so much fun. How many three-letter words can you find using letters in Homer? M O W M O. How per let swing. Orchid has one. Orchid has two. Hello and welcome back to the No Man's Dog Show. What is on top of a house? Dante. Funding for Zoom is provided by. The National Science Foundation. America's investment in the future. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. A private corporation funded by the American people. The Arthur Biden Davis Foundation. And by contributions to your PBS stations from viewers like you. Thanks! Hi, we're the Sacred Heart Dirt Dogs here in Agawam, Massachusetts. Get ready, Zoom! emailed to us by Jenny L of California. You know, I needed some marshmallows, some spoons, and some bags. Hey guys, this is how you play. You guys have to split up into two teams of two, the blue and the orange, and we have two cheerleaders, Courtney Woo! and singing. <laughs> and each team will have one flinger and one catcher. Okay. The flingers use the spoons to fling marshmallows to their catchers, stand about right here, and they catch in their lunch bags. First team to catch 10 marshmallows wins. All right, guys, let's play. All right, so you guys are the catcher? Yeah. The <laughs> All right. Are you guys ready? Which one do you wonder about the most? The planet I wonder about most is Pluto because I don't know a lot about it and it's so far away. The moon because it's cool. I might go there, but I don't know. Earth because it provides us oxygen to live. Pluto because it, because it is purple and it's small. My favorite planet is Venus because whenever anyone asks me, like, what planet are you from? I'll say I'm from Venus because I'm so weird. The moon because most people have went there, went there, and I just like to go there sometimes. My favorite planet is Earth because that's the planet I live in. I probably wouldn't have been able to live without it. I'm done. <laughs> Zoom 
you do? You know, dioramas aren't just for school projects, and you don't just have to make them out of shoeboxes. Dioramas are a great way to remember something that happened. Instead of making a photo album, you can use pictures to make a whole scene. Brittany, Guadalupe, Arizona, since it's the idea to make our diorama. Here's a diorama I made of a birthday party I had at the mall. I used a box to make a shopping bag, and I used pipe cleaners to make the bodies of my friends in it. And it's cool. This is a diorama I made, and it's the memories of my childhood. I made this baby bottle out of these two soda bottles that I put together, and I used clay to make the top. And I put it on this so you can spin and look at all the different pictures. And then my little shoes I used, my little London shoes that I used to run around in. They're so tiny. And this is one of my favorite books when I was little. I used to love this book. So um, now we're going to show you how to make your own diorama. I'm using pictures of my younger years because I don't have any current ones. And I'm going to make a clothesline timeline. Oh, and instead of being able to get younger to older? Uh-huh. That's, that's cool. Thanks. So I'm going to use a strawberry basket. I'm going to put a little piece of cloth in it. And I'm going to put little pictures of me in it and it's going to be like I'm in the playtime. Okay, so I'm going to cut the strip. Make sure you make it long enough. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to cut it for you. Sure. There you go. And tie it up. Okay. Got yourself a little clues line. Oh. And now it's time to decide how you want to arrange your objects inside your diorama. So I have these pictures, and I think I'm just going to kind of pop them in there and make them look like they're playing in the playpen. Aww. And so you're going to do that, arrange them. Okay, well, I have these clothes pins to hang them on the clothesline. I cut some clothes out of construction paper. These are cool clothes pins. They're so tiny. I know. I, I like how small they are. I'm just going to kind of put it like that so it hangs down over. Ta-da! And then I'm going to put this little teddy bear. Ta-da! Oh, that's cute. I will. Well, now our dioramas are finished, and you can display your diorama on a shelf or give it to someone as a present, but let's check out what the other Zoomers have done for their dioramas. Okay. Hey, guys. Hey, you guys. Oh, hey. Cool. So, what do you guys got? All right. Well, I made mine in the fishbowl, and you can see the letters up here that say N and C, and that stands for North Carolina. And when I went to North Carolina, one of my most favorite things to do was to skimboard. And it's sort of like a little surfboard. And then, I, when I was skateboarding, I always had fun doing it with my cousins. And there's a picture of my oh, cousins. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. So what about you, Courtney? What'd you do? Oh. All right. So uh, I wanted mine to be about my cat because I love my cat. And so I had this box, and I didn't know what to do with it. So I said, okay, it kind of looks like a TV. And then I made it like the cat show featuring my cat, Sophie. And I, have, I just took pictures of... At, at my house with my cat. And then on the outside, they have these muffin tin cups, and they make them look pretty. <laughs> Those came out awesome. Yeah. So if you have any other cool ideas for arts and crafts projects, then send them to the Zoom website, pbskids.org. And you can see some of the dioramas the other Zoomers made. I've been taking karate for two and a half years. I practice four times a week. Karate is great. It teaches me how to focus really hard and work up to a goal. Each time I get a new color belt, it means I'm ready to learn new and more complicated stuff. So far, I've gotten my white belt, my yellow belt, my yellow purple belt, purple belt, green belt, green brown belt, and I have my brown red belt now. My first class at karate was nothing like I think it would be. I thought it was going to be like movies, like doing all the stunts and kicks and flips. We started out, we didn't do any kicks or flips or anything. Uh, we started out with learning some basic things like the type of karate we were learning, a whole bunch of different phrases that we'd hear in class. Very really good. And then just reverse it. Like Sheehan, which means master teacher. Our Sheehan, Mr. Patterson, is a fifth degree black belt. Walk the legs up. That means she's very good. Great. Yes, Sheehan. I don't see any extra movement. You understand? Yes, Sheehan. Put it. Your. One. Two. Three. Four. Two. 
it took about two months to actually even start doing kicks. It takes a lot of work and flexibility to get your kicks up high. It takes a lot of concentration, aim, and strength. Xi'an has said that my karate's been getting good quickly because before karate, I've taken ballet for three years. Really precise movements in ballet as well as karate. I've always wanted to do karate. It's so much fun. And right now, I'm working on breaking boards. The first time I tried, my fist slipped. So it kind of just really, really hurt and it didn't break the board. This time, I focused really hard and I didn't pay attention to the pain. Experience because I've never done anything like that. Arshihan. Turn around, put your belt off. Now to your new knowledge. Turn around, put your hands up to the side. Turn around. Now that I'm a red belt, I'm only two belts away from being a black belt. A black belt is even better than a bench. Turn around. Now to your old knowledge. Turn around, hold the belt up. Quiet! I can't wait to be a black belt because they train a lot harder than normal people do, and I want to get into that kind of training. One more time. Zen Katsudashi! Zen Katsudashi! Do it! One, two, three. Kakatsudashi! Rachel T. of Southboro, Massachusetts, emailed us these Fanny Dooleys. Fanny Dooley likes Mississippi, but doesn't like states or rivers. Why do you think that is? Fanny Dooley likes to move, but doesn't like cows. Why do you think that is? Sandy do like beer, but doesn't like bucks or goats. Why do you think that is? Who is this Fanny Dooley, and what does she like? Make up your own and send them to Zoom. Fanny Dooley! Which do you think will bounce higher, the golf ball or the rubber ball? Got an idea? Okay. Ready? Surprise! It's the golf ball. We'll slow it down so you can see it. But how much higher did it bounce? Well, Stacy L. of Tinley Park, Illinois, said there's a way to measure it. She calls her invention the Daredevil Ball Jump, and we're going to use it to see which ball bounces the highest. To make a Daredevil Ball Jump, you need two long and skinny poles. You can use wooden dowels like these, or you can use broomsticks or tree branches. All right, so you're going to take your wooden dowels and set them three feet apart. So, does that look good? Yeah, that looks good. All right, so you're going to have to hold this while I get the ball again set up. One doesn't look like it's going to work for this, so I'm going to have to tie these together. And so you're going to hook it around your end, Maya? Okay. I'm going to get it. So now we have to secure our feet, and then we can, you got it? Yeah. Pull down. Um, and you can use a piece of string. And this part right here with the rubber band is the part that the ball is going to have to jump over. And then you want to take a piece of paper and staple it to the rubber band. So I'm going to do that. You fold it. The ball moves pretty quickly, so it's hard to tell whether it went over the rubber band or under it. This way, if it goes under, you can see and hear it hits a piece of paper. You're also going to need something for the balls to roll them. So we're going to use these binders. And you're going to need a meter stick. 
So now that we've built our daredevil ball jump, we're going to use it to measure how high a tennis ball, golf ball, rubber ball, and balls could bounce. Catch it at the height of the bounce. Maybe if we move forward, forward. Then, forward. Then, the the then we'll be at the part where the golf ball will yeah. fall behind. Yeah. So. We'll try it. Oh, you're going to lean over. Well, we can move it up like bit. five foot. We might be getting close. Oh, oh nice. Wow. Barely. We made that. Barely. From my view, it looks like it made like this. Yeah. <laughs> 65. So the golf ball went 65. Make room for centimeters. The M. Ready? Wow. Should we move down? I'd say back. It's not even getting close oh, to. Oh, yeah. So one, two, step. Oh, man. It didn't make it. Right. Okay, it didn't make it. So move down. Yeah, move it down. Yeah, that makes sense. Why don't you take the measurement of this one, just in case? This is 46 centimeters. Okay, let's see. Okay. Made it. So it's 63 centimeters. Two less than the golf ball. Do you want to lower it for the ball side, or just try it this way? Try it. Okay. Oh, that bounced so much. Wow, that was skyrocketing into the air. Okay, zero. Zero. Why do you think it didn't bounce? Because, look, when it bounced, one side goes flat. In our experiment, the golf ball bounced the highest with 65 centimeters. Then, the rubber ball with 63 centimeters. And then third, the tennis ball. 46 centimeters. And last, we have the clay ball, which didn't bounce at all, so we had to give it zero centimeters. We think that how the ball bounces has to do with what's inside of the ball. So we asked someone to cut the balls open for us. So this is the golf ball? Yep. So wait, this is the only one that's hollow. As the ones that bounce, this one bounced the lowest. Do you think it's because it was hollow? I would think that the one that was hollow is yeah. the highest. Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe it doesn't have to do with weight. Yeah. You have to do with what's made out of. That is so cool. Look at that. That's really neat. Do you think there's anything you could do to change the way the balls bounce? Keep watching because later in the show, we're going to do some more experiments using these balls. And thanks, Stacy, for sending us this great Zoom set. <laughs> Ready to do your homework? Christine J. of Brooklyn, New York, sent us this zinger. She writes, Dear Zim, I have a little zinger for you. Here's how it goes. There's an eight-letter word called Homer. There are lots of three-letter words inside this word. How many three-letter words can you find using the letters in Homer? You have to think, Christine. And I see what she means, you guys. You can find words like, low, oh, and, yeah. huh, mm -hmm. So do you guys wanna like come down? Oh my god. Okay. Like whoa. Oh, that's, that's a good one. Whoa. Okay, so let's rate them down. Row, go row. Row. And then number two. We did whoa. Row and ho. H O E yeah, oh, like host. M O W Mo. Like to mow the lawn. Oh, yeah. Then and then her. Her. Her, oh yeah, her. What about oh. Whoa. Like to woo oh, someone? Yeah, to woo someone. So woo. Oh, um. Oh, yeah, there's another one. It's like, there, or, or is it metal? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Or. Oh, uh. Oh, no, I think it's a word. Okay, yeah. so. Moo. <laughs> so funny. And then. Uh, how? Oh, how? Yeah, how? Who? Who? Mm-hmm. Who? I don't know if there's many more. The hem. Oh, the hem of your oh, pants. Hem. Oh, yeah. Oh, the hem. All right, so we got 11. We got 11. We got 11. So we got whoa, whoa, 
O, L, H, W, O, R, M, O, H, 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 O, R, that the golf ball bounced higher than the tennis ball and the rubber ball, and that the clay ball didn't bounce at all. But what about after they've been warming up in the sun or cooling down in the freezer for a couple of hours? Matt P. of Merritt Island, Florida sent us this challenge. We thought we'd use the daredevil ball jump we made earlier to find out. These balls have been cooling in the freezer for three hours. And these balls have been heating up in an aluminum foil lined box for three hours in the sun. And these are the ones we're going to test first. These balls are our controls. They were at room temperature, and here's how they bounced. Later, we'll compare them to the warm and cold balls. Let's try the warm balls first. Okay. Okay, let's take that. Need it. Take that. Okay. Is wow, it bounced higher. 67. Okay. 45.5 centimeters. Okay. Yay. Wow. Zero centimeters again. All right. So, Maya, do you want to do cold? Okay. Ooh, these are cold. Good. Ooh. You hear the sound it makes? The noise it's making is like a big difference. Okay, take that measurement. Take that measurement. 63 centimeters. That's nice. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. Is that different from the first one? Yeah, it is. But I should use... So I think we should just try it. Okay. Okay, take that. It's going to be the highest right there. 68 centimeters. Let's move it. Down to zero. Oh, look how high you can do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, so was that zero? Zero centimeters. Overall, the warm balls bounced higher than the room temperature balls, and the cold balls bounced slower. Except for the rubber ball, but we can't really count that because that was a different kind of ball. And the clay ball was in a league of its own. But what if you used a baseball or a volleyball or maybe even a ball of Play-Doh? Be sure to test it out and send your results to Zoom, like Matt did. Thanks for the great Zoom sign, Matt. Got a phenom to present? A wicked sweet experiment? Send us email. Got an idea that'll fly? Email. Or we'll open up the mind's eye. Send it to Zoom. To who? of having Massachusetts decided he wanted to volunteer, so he and his mom signed up to deliver Meals on Wheels. The Meals on Wheels program delivers hot food to people who have a hard time cooking or leaving their house. They can hurt themselves because they're old. After picking up the meals at Hadley Senior Center, Caleb and his mom drive to about 20 houses and drop off all the hot meals. As days turned into weeks, Caleb discovered he had lots of new friends. He also learned that sometimes people need a helping hand and that he could help. Do you volunteer in your community? If you do, you're already a member of the Zoom team. We want to hear all about it. So send us your stories, along with any photos or videos, to this address. Remember, the little things you do can sometimes make a big difference. You need to ask him. And join the Zoom team! We've had such an exciting competition today. We started with over 100 breeds and only have two dogs left. Our intelligence test will determine who is the champion. 
On my right, we have a beautiful purebred Labrador Retriever, Dante! Oh, Dante, you're magnificent! <laughs> and on my left, we have George. How much? <laughs> Our first question, what is on top of a house? Dante. Dante, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Oh, sorry, out of time. Oh. George. A pineapple feels what? Oh, sorry, George. Yes, that's correct. A pineapple feels rough. And our final question. The best baseball player's name was Babe.